Hey guys, got a new video for Path of Exile. So this is going to be a, a continuation of my Armor Sacker for Dummies series. And in this series, we are going to go over uh, gear, basically, right? So we're going to go over a lot of the uh, key items that you need to um, play Armor Stacker and uh, what are the, you know, the important stats on the item. So I know there is uh, a lot of topics you guys want me to cover and uh, we will get into um, all of them um, eventually but you know i think it's important to go over some of the basics first because the goal of this video series is to kind of give you an, an understanding of uh, how to build an armor stacker right so you don't really have to rely on some copying someone's pob or you know maybe you're using a pob from uh, another content creator and uh, you don't really understand why they're taking this item or um, how should you scale your damage to increase your damage or increase your defense and all these kind of uh, things that people a lot of t uh, people do have questions about um, basically the way to I think solve those issues is to kind of help you understand why certain items are used and all this kind of stuff right so this video is going to go over a lot of the key items that we use all right so let's talk a little bit about the sword so uh, most important stat for this weapon is going to be the increased attack speed. Uh, the flat added fizz is really not that important, right? Because we went over in the last video, you know, we're getting most of our flat damage from our wrath and smite aura. So this actual like fizz damage from the sword is a very, very, very small part of our, our actual like flat damage, right? So um, try to buy one that has a max roll on the attack speed. Okay, so for weapon enchants, the one you're looking for is going to be the um, Harvest Enchant. So the Harvest Enchant for attack speed is going to be uh, best in slot for this weapon because that's going to increase the base attack speed of your weapon, which is uh, going to give you the most damage, right? Um, as for Corruptions, the, you do want to have the increased attack speed Corruption. And then if you are using Precise Technique, then getting a Resolute Technique uh, corruption is going to be uh, very big because that's going to save you a point on the tree and maybe you can't even reach precise technique or I mean uh, resolute technique on the tree so that's going to be pretty big uh, for saving points and allows you to completely drop precision and gain quite a bit of uh, extra mana okay so that is uh, main hand I mean no questions asked you need to use this sword right for armor stacking so what can you use in your offhand? So in your offhand, um, a lot of people like to use two of these, right? So if you have two of them, then the 1% increased attack damage per 450 armor is basically 2%, right? So it basically doubles your damage. So um, it's you can kind of get away with this if you're doing a skill with a lot of recovery, like uh, Molten Strike, that kind of stuff, or even Smite if you have a lot of defense to where you don't really even care about, you know, hits and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's a good option to go with uh, two swords. Uh, it's going to make you a lot squishier than using a shield, right? So what are some other good shield options? Well, Aegis Aurora is going to be um, a very, very good uh, synergy for Armor Stacker, uh, mainly because a lot of builds, uh, most Armor Stackers are CI, and uh, the Recover Energy Shield equal to 2% of your armor when you block is basically a full heal every time you block, and it is pretty easy to get block capped. Uh, spell block and attack block capped on uh, uh, what do you call it? Our stacker, well, our stacker, uh, armor stacker, right? So, a uh, very good synergy with Aegis Aurora and the plus five to max cold res is uh, very important for um, trying to get uh, 90 all res on you know classes other than other than chieftain, so scion, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's very hard to actually get 90 all res with you know the melding giving minus four, minus four max res you need quite a lot of aura effect to actually get 90 all res unless you're using Aegis, right? If you're using Aegis Aurora, you only need in POB, I think it is, uh, it's times 2.8 aura effect and a level 23 purity and you get your 90 all res, right? So Aegis Aurora, uh, very, very nice to use and also does actually, you know, come with quite a lot of base energy shield and roll up to like uh, 255, uh, 250 on just on the base, right? So that's pretty cool. 
Okay, so uh, Dawnbreaker, right? Dawnbreaker um, is another very good option for builds who want to uh, negate a lot of the physical damage you take. So this shield is used uh, mainly used on Transcendence builds, right? So Transcendence, you need to convert all of your physical damage taken from hits to a different element or chaos, right? And this shield starts off with about up to 20% of his taken as fire, and then you can corrupt it for another 8% um, on the implicit. And if you double corrupt it, you can get up to another 16, which is uh, pretty insane, right? Okay, so let's go over uh, some helmets, right? So what are some good helmets, right? So on very um, like budget setups, right? An Alpha's Howl is very good. Um, so a couple of things about the helmet. First of all, it has a plus two to aura gems. So early on in the league, when you don't have access to very cheap um, corrupted items with plus two aura or AOE, this is one place where you can get up, you know, plus two to aura. So that's going to help you get a level 23 purity, which is basically what you can kind of need to get to 90 auras, right? So that's one thing, nice thing about the helmet. It also does come with 16% mana reservation, which is pretty big. And then also it has cannot be frozen, which is really nice. It means you don't have to use branking. And basically the flat evasion it rolls, you know, is pretty high. It's almost like just like having a jade flask on. The downside of this helmet obviously is that it doesn't have any energy shields. So um, you're not really going to be getting a lot of energy shield. And Armor Sector does have problems gain getting a lot of energy shield, right? Because we don't really have points. Uh, that you can use on the tree to go like pick up a lot of increased or all this kind of stuff right so most of the energy shield you're getting is going to be from your helmet uh, maybe your gloves your shields or maybe some from your rings right so all right so another good option to use is going to be the formless flame this uh drops from breach monsters or from zoth or Zoff Breach Monsters or Zoff himself, right? So uh, this helmet is uh, really nice because it does give you the armors increased by overcap fire resistance mod. So before you can actually get a Grasping Mail, you can actually use this helmet to get the fire overcap mod, which is pretty cool, right? So um, it is very common, I think. It's not really that expensive and it is very good. It's used quite a bit on Chieftain builds because you know, it is pretty easy to stack up quite a lot of fire resistance on a Chieftain, even on low budget. Um, I was considering using this for Scion too, on like my low budget builds, but uh, it was actually pretty hard to actually get uh, enough fire resistance to, you know, make this helmet actually be worth using, right? So just a normal Alpha's Howl was actually more damage for me than this helmet on my Scion, just because of the flat evasion that Alpha's Howl does give, right? So uh, if you can get enough fire resistance though, then this helmet is a very good uh, option for like early game, right? Before you get a grasping mail. Okay, so uh, another option is a crafted hubris circlet, right? So there's a couple ways that people craft these and um, we'll go over a couple of them, right? So I think we it's better to make separate crafting videos with like, you know, specific details, but we'll just go over the different types of helmets there are, right? So first helmet is going to be very simple, just helmet, right? It's going to have um, mana reservation with uh, from an essence, right? Effing essence of loathing. And then you can craft it with like a fractured um, energy shield or intelligence roll. And then just basically the goal is to get a lot of base energy shield and intelligence and maybe cold res or fire res, depending on which uh, resistance you you want right so just resistances intelligence energy shield a very simple helmet and this is uh it's not really going to give you damage per se but it is going to give you quite a lot of survivability because like we mentioned before you know energy shield is pretty hard to come by on armor stacker okay so second one is going to be a little bit more uh defensive and what we're going to do is you're either going to get a there is a 10% of physical damage from hits taken as fire or cold or lightning or chaos, I believe, right? There's some that drop in delve as a suffix, and there's some that drop in betrayal as a prefix. So whichever one you want, you can choose. But if you do go for the betrayal one, then you cannot get an unveil, right? So you can't unveil plus two AOE gems, you know, if you already have the betrayal one there, right? And basically what you do is you just fracture the mod, the Fizz taken as mod, and then you craft it like you would any other helmet, and you just want to get high base ES, intelligence, uh, or cold res, or fire res, and then um, probably want to go for an AoE gem, you know, plus two AoE unveil, right? 
And for the implicits, you probably want to go for, um, a lot of people like to go for the um, physical damage taken as chaos implicit from the Eater of Worlds. And then the Searing Exarch one is like reduced mana cost of attacks, right? Oh, and similar in the previous helmet, I think when you're starting out, it's probably better just to go for the mana reservation implicit because it's going to help you out early game. So um, the third type of helmet is going to be a um, synthesized helmet. This is um, very expensive and basically it is, um, yeah, probably like the end game helmet for most armor stackers, except for the um, transcendence builds because transcendence does need to have the phys physical damage conversion, right? So for any other build besides transcendence, you want to get a, uh, it's like a hubris circlet with armor effect and then I think most of the mirror tier ones, they have like plus one to gems and then plus one, or no, and then socketed gems have 92% reservation efficiency, right? So it's gonna allow you to fit in a lot more auras, give you a lot more aura effect and gem levels, right? Also, it does the, the way they craft these is it's a lot of gem levels. So it's like plus one strength, plus one int, plus two aura, plus two AOE. So you end up getting tons of gem levels and it also increases your um, enlightened gem level, right? So you can have, uh, get even more reservation. So that's sort of the kind of helmet options uh, that you have um, that most people are using. Now let's go over some of the um, body armors. Okay, so Doriani's prototype, um, this is used like you mentioned before in the first video, it's a very easy way to scale damage early on in the league. Pretty easy to get a lot of minus lightning resistance to kind of like, and just give you tons and tons of damage for pretty much for free, right? So what are the important stats on this item when you're buying one? The only thing that matters is the increased energy shield roll, right? And if you can get some good corruptions on this item, uh, plus two AOE, plus two aura for smite at least, right? Or plus two proj for um, uh, lightning strike, molten strike, or uh, I think duration also, if you have like a vol lightning strike, you can use duration as well. So those are some good corruptions you can get for the item and they're usually pretty cheap, right? So the other option is going to be a grasping mail. Like we mentioned, I think we did go over the grasping mail a little bit, but basically the mods we are looking for is going to be armors increased by overcap fire resistance or evasion is increased by overcap cold res. And another very nice mod to have is the increased global defense. So I will be making separate guides on how to craft these. I do have one from like two, three leagues ago. You can go look up if you want. But yeah, you do want to have an open prefix when you make these because there is a mod you can craft. It's a Graviticus mod, I think, yeah, Graviticus, and it is up to about 12% physical damage from hits taken as uh, elemental, right? So that is very nice to have for defense, and it is a must to have if you're playing Transcendence. You need to get that little, that little bit of conversion on your armor. So it does make them uh, very hard to actually get because all the mods are random when you uh, identify it, right? So if you identify the item and it has full prefixes, well, that means you're gonna have to annul one of the prefixes, right? So say you get global defense and then you also get evasion ratings increased by overcap cold res, right? But then it also has a prefix for maximum life. Well, then that means you have to Null off that maximum life to be able to actually craft the uh, correct mod, right? So it does make um, getting the, the right base quite expensive. Um, now that there are Hinokora's locks in the game, it did make this a lot more deterministic. So it just costs money, basically, right? So you basically can guarantee a safe annul now, but then you have to uh, use the Hinokora's lock. So this is basically the end game armor base that you're looking for for your armor stacker. Pretty expensive, but um, yeah, I think I will make separate a separate video all about grasping mail, how to craft like a very budget one and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so on the grasping mail, which mod do you choose, right? So get asked this quite a bit, and uh, let's go over a couple of the mods, right? So when when would you choose which mod? Um, first of all, the evasion rating is increased by overcap cold res does have very nice synergy if you're using an Aegis Aurora. So Aegis Aurora gives plus five cold res, max cold res, right? Um, and uh, so basically that means if you use it with a purity of ice, then you're getting, you know, extra max res to, you know, get your 90 all res with melding in the flesh. So for that reason, I think on Scion specifically, um, getting a grasping mill with the overcap cold res mod is probably going to be the better option, right? Because then you use Aegis Aurora, you get your plus five to cold res, and then you use your purity of ice and you get extra 
uh, plus 15 or plus 16 cold res, and then you get your 90 all res, right? So uh, that is very nice for Scion. So Chieftain, on the other hand, is they probably want to have the plus uh, the armor is increased by overcap fire res. So one thing you can also do is if you're using the formulas flame, which gives you the fire overcap mod, then you can use a cold overcap chest on Chieftain and get like a little like you know double overcap thing going on, right? So the best one for damage is going to be a double overcap, so a fire and cold. These are however extremely rare, right? Another good combination is the cold res overcap and the global defense. So global defense doesn't actually really give you that much damage, but it does give you quite a lot of energy shield. So uh, it is definitely a nice balance getting a lot of uh, energy shield and getting damage at the same time. So I mean, this is the one I prefer actually the most. Of course, obviously getting a fire overcap and a global defense is also a very nice combination. All right, so another good option could be this perfect form Zodiac Leather. So this comes with the um, Cold Res Overcap mod on it as well, right? And then also, if you look at the flat evasion this armor has, it has close to about 3000 flat evasion rating. I mean, that's like two Jade Flasks worth of evasion rating, which is pretty big. Uh, one downside I see to this armor is that it's an evasion base and it has a pretty high dex requirement. So it's gonna be hard to get your socket colors on this. Also it does not have any energy shield, right? So uh, you'll probably, I think if you use this helmet and say you use the perfect form helmet with the formless inferno or formless flame that we looked at before, then you can get the armor and cold res over cap. You know, pretty much for, you know, very cheap. Cause I think these items are not expensive at all, right? But that does mean you are not gonna be getting a lot of energy shield right so you'll probably only have like 2000 2500 es if you did use these items but you know it is an option and it's worth men mentioning because of the you know the mod here right so for the boots uh march of the legion uh pretty much no questions asked like i've seen a lot of people they just go for a rare pair of boots and they skip the whole divine blessing setup with grace and all this but you know it, it it's not really ideal right because first of all if you look at the gem levels you're getting on your gem it's like plus five to your grace aura then you can get a corruption with like a plus two for fairly cheap and then you can get like if you really you know end game uh boot option you can get a plus four or a plus three pair of boots which is pretty much going to you know boost up your grace aura effect by t like crazy levels right i think march of legion pretty much um these are core items that you pretty much can't replace and you should definitely be buying these so when you do buy them uh, what stats you want to look for is you do want to look for a plus five to aura gem so this has to be plus five pretty much i mean it's not going to really cost any much more if it's a plus five there's there's like really cheap right uh, another good thing to look for is if you're playing Doriani's prototype, you want to try to get a low roll on the elemental resistance, right? Because this is all elemental resistance. That means it's going to give you um, lightning resistance, right? So you don't really want that on a Doriani's build. So you want to get a low roll if you can. Uh, movement speed also very nice to have, right? And if you're playing, if you're not playing Doriani though, uh, getting a higher roll on this is preferable. Okay, so the most popular glove option for armor stacker right now, I think, is going to be the Calm Spirit Titan Gauntlets. So, Gauntlets, right? So, even though in, they have been nerfed, they are still very viable on armor stacker. Um, just because of there is one cool interaction that you can use on armor stacker, and that's it's a armor and evasion mastery. And it says basically every four seconds regenerate life equal to one percent of your armor and evasion rating over one second since we already do have a lot of armor basically we can get permanent berserk basically once you do get enough armor so how much armor do you need to actually make these um viable right so i started using them when i only had about 500k armor and it's not really that much regen right so you have to i had to use a little bit uh, a few other things like uh We'll go over when we look, talk about the belts. So there's a belt you can use too that gives you a lot of regen. Uh, and then also that along with vitality was enough to actually make these, um, give you, you know, a pretty good uh, uptime on your rage. And in order to actually fill up your full rage bar, you do need about 2 million armor. So once you hit 2 million armor, you are going to be getting a full rage bar every four seconds, right? But even then, in, even at like 1 million armor, it's... 
um, every eight seconds you're gonna get a full rage bar. And even with that, it's still the uptime still feels very good. Um, rage generation is definitely not a problem, right? So the only downside to these gloves is you don't have any regen. So a couple good ways to get around the regen is first of all divine shield, right? So if you take divine shield, since we do have a lot of armor and we're preventing a lot of um, you know physical damage, uh, then we uh, will be regenerating quite a lot of energy shield just from this keystone. Um, I did some tests with it a couple of leagues back in Simulacrum, and I did get up to about like 6,000 ES regen. In extreme cases, this can give you quite a lot of energy shield. Uh, another option is Aegis Aurora with Glancing Blows. So basically, you know, Aegis Aurora, every time you block, you're going to be healed to full, basically. So that's very good for sustain. And another good option is going to be Leech. So there's a couple ways to get Leech. Probably the easiest way to get it is on a lightning cluster. Um, there is a lightning cluster notable that does give you some lightning damage leech as energy shield. Uh, and then there is also a watcher's eye mod for uh, energy leech while affected by uh, wrath, which is pretty nice. Um, and another very good option is just the uh, energy shield on hit while affected by discipline watcher's eye mod. Um, there, there's quite a few ways to negate the no regen downside and it is it is very manageable and i know some people don't like it but you know if you want the the power of basically full uptime berserk then that's the uh, you know the price you gotta pay right so um before calm spirit were um was adopted by our, a lot of the armor stackers a lot one of the main pair of gloves we were using is the shaper's touch crusader gloves so why are these gloves uh very nice well because they are they do give you a lot of nice stats. So let's take a look at the stats. You get accuracy from your intelligence. So this really does help uh, with your accuracy. You can lower your precision gem quite a bit by using these gloves because we do have a lot of intelligence, right? Uh, and then we get some mana from our strength, you know, because we are going, um, if you're playing Scion or even if you're playing Marauder, you're going to be getting a lot of strength from just from the travel nodes, right? So this does give you a lot more mana, which means it's a little bit easier to fit in auras like precision, vitality, and that kind of stuff. And then also 2% increased evasion per 10 intelligence. So we're also getting increased evasion, which is very nice. The increased melee damage per 10 decks really doesn't do anything. But yeah, basically that, I think the main mods is the increased evasion per 10 intelligence and then the accuracy. And then I guess strength is nice too. Oh, also, yeah, 1% increased energy shield per 10 strength. So this is also going to give you quite a lot of energy shield. So overall, just very good pair of gloves. Gives you a lot of damage, a lot of, a lot of energy shield, and fairly cheap. So you can get some nice corruptions on them. Although no one really does double corrupt these. So <laughs> it is hard. So it is hard to find a good pair of double corrupted uh, gloves. Right. So another good pair of gloves you can use is just uh, a, a pair of crafted rare sorcerer gloves, right? So... Basically, you just skip out on the Rage and Berserk and all that kind of stuff, and then you go for a more uh, tanky approach. And uh, one nice thing you can do with these gloves is um, you can get a, uh, what do you call it? Ancestral Call mod on them, on the Implicits, basically, right? So uh, you get your Ancestral Call and you get an extra skill gem, but you lose your Berserk and your Rage. But basically, because you're getting another skill gem, which is like, what, another 40% more damage, the damage it does kind of even out a little bit a little bit less than if you're using berserk but you gain a lot of energy shield you gain uh one extra implicit which like uh you can go for like you know mark effect or you can get pierce or you can get a wither expires slower and all this kind of stuff right so pretty nice overall and it does allow you to actually spec into zealot's oath and then get a lot of energy shield regen basically so it is very nice and i think in very end game uh, a pair of sorcerer gloves is just a lot better, right? Because not having any regen just kind of feels bad, in my opinion. So, uh, with the nerfs to... I wouldn't really say the nerfs to Ashes of the Stars, but rather the nerfs to all of the alternate quality gems that we used to have. Basically, none of the new um, Transfigure gems are pretty much worth using. There was good quality um, options on the gems, then maybe Ashes of the Stars might be good again, right? Because honestly, Ashes of the Stars, the main thing you wanted was the quality because of all of the alternate quality gems. And the reservation was kind of like a bonus, right? So you can get your reservation anywhere else. And we are currently doing that in this league. But, you know, the quality is something that was very unique to the amulet. So maybe in, the fu in future patches, if there are some actually useful or usable quality, <laughs> quality uh, you know, options on gems, then... 
Uh, maybe it'll start being used again, but for now, pretty much the best slot is going to be the Eternal Struggle. So, um, why the Eternal Struggle? Well, this can roll up to 16% increased aura effect and one other nice mod, right? And also gives you a lot of stats, like Strength, Dex, Intelligence. It gives you Global Defense, which is very nice, and also free Culling Strike. So, pretty much uh, very hard to beat this amulet, you know, Culling Strike, aura effect and some other cool mod, right? I mean, that's pretty insane, just on its own. Okay, so uh, another really cool one is Voice of the Storm. So this amulet doesn't come with any aura effect, but it does have the lightning damage with non-critical strikes is lucky. And pretty much most armor stackers are not crit builds. They're either playing with precise technique or elemental overload. So pretty much all of your attacks are not gonna be critical strikes or the ones that do a lot of damage, right? So getting uh, lucky, lightning damage with non-critical strikes is a very very big damage increase right so um, this is a very very good option to use you are going to have to get aura effect somewhere else but yeah this is very big for damage okay so another good option is the all's uprising all's uprising this is dropping in delve i believe right from uh from the all boss or the crystal king boss and basically this allows you to just get an extra aura for free so um, this could be nice. You know, you can also do some cool things with like, uh, deter you know, get the determination one and then link your determination to like empower and all these kind of other cool things, right? And then, but then the aura is still going to be free. So you don't really care about the extra reservation you're putting on your, your uh, determination and stuff like that. But it is something cool you can do. Um, very good option as well, I think. All right, so another very good budget option is the Jinxed Juju. This amulet does come with up to 15% increased aura effect. Also has some intelligence, which is nice, right? And since it's pretty cheap, um, maybe you can get some corruptions on it. Uh, so this uh, this is a very nice amulet, right? Uh, mainly just because of the increased aura effect. So after that, there are some other um, things you can try. So there's like the Simplex amulet. You could try to craft one of those or even just a rare amulet with uh, plus one all skills, plus one lightning, and then, you know, some nice stats like mana reservation. So those are all actually good options as well. Okay, so let's go over different belts. First of all, well, best in slot belt for an armor stacker is, well, surprise, surprise, uh, mage blood, right? Well, because, you know, we do get a lot of our damage from our flasks, and mage blood allows you to have permanent uh, rare flasks or magic flasks, and you can use stuff like uh, enkindling orbs to get the increased effect on those flasks and have them permanently active, uh, which is going to be pretty big, you know, for increasing your damage. Okay, so another good option for the belt is the Magnite belt, right? So this belt is pretty nice because, well, first of all, when you're not using a mage blood, having 50% increased flask charges gains is going to be uh, pretty big for your flask uptime, right? Um, also, 10% double damage if you have 200 strength. This is fairly easy easy to achieve for most armor stackers but probably not the 400 strength unless you go out of your way to get it so very nice and then you can get a corrupted one with the grace aura effect corruption and overall it's going to be very big for uh damage and most importantly your flask uptime right it's probably not something you want to use on the doriani's prototype version because this does come with all resistances right which pretty much means that uh well you know you're gonna be reducing your damage Okay, so another good belt is the Immortal Flesh. So why is this belt so nice? So this is actually something that I think is pretty much best in slot pre-Mage Blood for a the Doriani's prototype version. And a couple of reasons why. Well, first of all, it does come with minus elemental resistances, which is in turn gonna, you know, lower our lightning res and give us more damage, right? So 40% uh, increased armor while ign not ignited, frozen, or shocked. I mean, that's kind of nice, right? Not that bad, but... Uh, one of the other big things on this is it has up to 350 life regen per second. So, you know, this is very nice for um, your rage sustain when using calm spirits. Uh, spirit. You can also, these are fairly common or like, like extremely common, right? So you can easily get a grace, uh, a grace corruption implicit uh, on the belt for pretty cheap, right? And one other kind of um, pretty big thing is this regenerate mana per second uh, up to 10, right? So before you get a mage blood, and you can really start reducing the mana cost of your skills, you are going to need to run a clarity for a lot of these builds to, you know, like level one or level three clarity to actually give you enough mana regen, right? I mean, you can also get mana leech and all that kind of stuff, right? But this belt basically gives you enough mana regen to sustain all of your abilities. 
without using clarity. So you actually get to remove clarity from your setup, uh, gain back quite a bit of mana from reserving the gem and an extra gem slot. So overall, this belt, a uh, very good, um, very good option for like pre-mage blood with um, Doriani's prototype. Right, it's pretty much everything you want in the build for a belt. Okay, so String of Servitude, this belt is pretty insane. It can have up to 60% increased grace aura effect. I mean, that's just crazy, right? So it's pretty much the only one you're looking for is a grace, 60% increased grace aura effect, String of Servitude. Bonus if you can get a strength and determination one. That's going to be pretty insane, right? But uh, I do think it is sort of outclassed by the last belt. We looked at the Immortal Flesh, uh, especially for Dorianis prototype, right? Um, if you look in POB, the Mortal Flesh is actually going to be giving you more damage than this belt, and also with the upsides of, like we mentioned before, right? Uh, same thing with the Magnate. Magnate is actually, I think they were about the same amount of damage, but it, the Magnate did end up giving you the um, extra flasks sustain, right? So overall, this belt, pretty cool, but there, I think there are better options that either give comparable damage, um to this belt plus some other good stats right so okay so that is sort of uh, the belts um, that i think are worth using um there are a lot of um i've seen some people use like a crystal belt like crafted crystal belt with just resistance high energy shield and that kind of stuff and that can work too you're probably gonna you are probably gonna be losing a little bit of damage but you know, you can uh, kind of work something out. You can also craft a micro distillery belt, you know, and get like a mini mage blood at home belt and that kind of stuff if you're really interested. But I haven't really tested that stuff out. Okay, so let's talk about some rings. So ring slots are pretty much just going to be there to give you resistances and then energy shield and then maybe some flat added lightning damage. And um, this is where you're going to be um, crafting on the reduced mana cost of skills or non-channeling, right? Uh, so you can um, reduce the cost of your Divine Blessing setup that you're going to be getting from the March of the Legion boots. So this is one place where you can actually craft on the reduced mana cost of skills because we are going to need to get 100% in total to actually cast our Grace Aura, right? So uh, that's going to be a prefix. So preferably you want to get a Ruby Ring. Um, if you're playing Doriani's prototype, a Ruby Ring is preferable because you are going to need, need a lot of fire res, right? Because we are going to be running Purity of Ice. So, you know, cold res isn't really as bad as fire. So you want to get a ruby ring with a tier 1 fire res and then maybe a tier uh, 1 or 2 cold res. And with two of those, you're usually your resistances are fine. All right, so some other cool rings um, basically is just going to be a synthesized ring with a grace aura effect implicit. That's going to be sort of end game, your end game ring that you want to get. But pretty much the the stats you're looking for are similar. Some other good rings. So original sin. Um, this ring is just amazing for consistent damage and actually pretty insane damage scaling when you start um, getting access to wither stacks with things like in this league you can do it with charms or there is also um, a jewel that you can get the um, balance of terror that if you cast despair then you you inflict wither on hit. So when you get all that combined, it is pretty insane for damage. All right, so uh, Nimus, right? Nimus is uh, pretty insane on any projectile build, and it's you know exactly the same for armor stackers using projectiles like uh, lightning strike or molten strike. It's pretty much just gonna double your damage. Uh, so this ring is pretty much um, I don't know, I wouldn't say a must, but if you're playing a proj build, uh, definitely try to get one of these, right? So what are the important stats? There is no real important stats, um, but probably the dex, I guess would be the thing to focus on because we already have so much increased damage that this increased proj is like literally going to do no nothing all right so let's talk a little bit about some flasks right so um the main flask types you want is going to be basalt uh stibonite and then you want a silver flask and then either a jade flask or a ruby flask so why a ruby flask and ruby flask is nice because um first of all before like say before you get a mage blood um, you don't really want to use a ruby flask to cap your res, but it's going to give you over cap fire res. And so this is nice for mainly, mainly just for curses, right? So if you're doing content like Simulacrum, where there's always going to be some kind of curse or minus resistance applied to you, then, well, a good solution is just to get a bunch of fire res or a bunch of cold res, right? 
So that's reason uh, one for the Ruby Flask. And number two is, well, it uses, it doesn't really use that many charges. So it's a very good spot to put your reduced mana cost to skills uh, craft, right? Right, so another reason why Ruby Flask is nice is because, well, it has 20% less fire damage taken. So this with Mindy Alvarez is pretty much going to make Ignites do like zero damage to you. I mean, unless you get, you get hit by a massive Ignite, which rarely ever happens. Um, so that's one reason why I like Ruby Flasks. Okay, so that is sort of like the f uh, main kind of flasks. Make sure you get good rolls on your suffixes, like the uh, invasion armor. Oh yeah, so what suffixes do you want on your flasks, right? So they, they don't have to really be in this exact same order on your flasks, like so, but you do want to get increased evasion, increased armor, um, increased attack speed, and then reduce mana cost of skills. And if you're not using a mage blood on your fifth flask, you can go for a reduced effect of curses, which is very nice. Mod, a very nice mod to have or you can kind of get whatever you want right and on the mage blood flasks obviously you want to have the 70 percent increased effect and on the if you don't have a mage blood you want to have the plus three gain three charges when hit uh roll right but aside from that the suffixes and the flask bases are pretty much all the same okay so what are some good unique flasks you can use well, first of all, Taste of Hate is going to be um, very nice for mitigating physical damage. It also does give you a decent amount of damage from the Fizz as Extra, right? Um, and then one other cool thing about this flask is, um, well, I guess not really cool, but you pretty much need to use this flask if you're going to be running Transcendence or uh, in League at least, right? Okay, so another good flask. Oh, so when you're getting your taste of hate probably the most important role is going to be the fizz damage from hits taken as cold you want to get this on a max roll 15 percent and i guess the the other you know fizz is extra doesn't really matter as much right okay so another good flask to have is the bottled faith right so bottled faith uh the most important role on this is going to be the uh, middle roll right so the consecrated ground created during effect applies 10% increased damage taken to enemies. So it's like another 10% more damage basically, right? You also do get a lot of um, life regen or ES regen when you're on here. Or if you're using calm spirit, I guess rage regen, right? Okay, so um, very nice option. Very good. Probably one of the best uh, single target options there is. So another good one is going to be the dying sun flask. Dying sun gives you plus two proj. So that's nice for something like um, Lightning Strike, if you want to have better clear, or on Molten Strike, giving you plus two proj for a little bit more damage. Um, there is some other flasks. There is like the Vessel of Vintikar, which is going to give you um, some nice increased damage and leech, which is pretty cool. And I think that's about it, guys, for the flasks. All right, so that is sort of like your gear, right? So what other kind of items are... Um, sort of mandatory on uh, armor stacker. So first of all, a good timeless jewel, right? Br a brutal restraint or a militant faith. These are used to get increased aura effect and kind of fix other issues with the build. So brutal, brutal restraint, very good for getting your aura effect in your decks, fixing up your decks issues. Militant faith, nice for reducing mana cost and uh, getting more aura effect. Militant faith is also the jewel you use if you're going to go transcendence because it can roll the transcendence keystone, right? So for non-chieftain builds, you do want to have, you're, you're pretty much going to need a melding of the flesh to get, you know, 90 alt res. And uh, when you're playing Doriani's prototype, you want to get the minus to all ele elemental resistances on a max roll, so 80%, right? And then 4% uh, on the maximum ele elemental resistances is pretty much a must. Like, don't buy it if it's not a 4%. Um, yeah, and if you're not playing Doriana's prototype, then try to get a lower roll on the minus to all elemental resistances. Okay, so what are some other good gems, right? So, um, getting a large thread of hope in this socket here is going to allow you to grab Glancing Blows and Divine Shield. So, very good spot for a large thread of hope. So, same thing with the thread of hope as the melding of the flesh, right? If you're playing Doriana's prototype, get a minus 20. Playing non Doriani's prototype, get a minus 10. All right, so Watcher's Eye. Well, what mods do you want on the Watcher's Eye? Well, I think it really does depend on the content you're doing, uh, first of all. So let's go over some good defensive mods first. So um, reduce damage taken from critical strikes from Determination is very good. Uh, very solid mod. 
uh, physical damage taken as uh, elemental uh, mods for purity of elements or purity of ice or fire, whichever one you're using, right? Those are all very solid uh, defensive uh, mods. And uh, I guess also um, energy shield on hit or leech could be considered a defensive mod. Uh, uh, ES on hit, very, very powerful, right? Okay, so some other good mods for offense are going to be uh, precision attack speed. Um, lightning penetration from wrath if you are using if you're not doing chaos damage right with the uh, original sin um, and then there is uh, I think the other wrath conversion or fizz is extra is not really all that great but I think the best two ones are going to be attack speed precision and then the uh, damage penetration with wrath wrath so if you're using original sin then probably attack speed precision is going to be uh, a lot better right but yeah my my favorite mods is probably the ES on hit mod with some other defensive like complete defensive watcher's eye and for transcendence you are going to need to get a double physical damage taken as so either a double purity of elements or a double a one purity of elements and one purity of ice and on top of that um, you are going to need to get a uh, either the ES on hit or leech right so ES on hit preferably because um, you are going to need to have that uh, sustain, right? Uh, so these Watcher's Eyes are extremely expensive and you can even go for a triple purity, uh, purity of elements or a, triple, a double purity of elements and single purity of ice or fire. And then that actually allows you to use an Aegis Aurora instead of a uh, Dawnbreaker. Uh, shield, uh, you know, which is pretty insane, but I think that is getting a little bit, we're getting a little bit of head of, ahead of ourselves, right? But yeah, those are some of the Watcher's Eye mods that I recommend. All right, so let's talk about uh, clusters, large clusters, small clusters, and that kind of stuff. I think that is going to be the last um, piece of gear we do need to talk about. The um, end game, um, getting one one passive voices or three passive voices, is going to be the um, I mean best in slot. It's going to give you extra um, aura effect, so it's going to give you an extra thirty percent aura effect by getting if you get all three. Some builds even go, you know, get four um, cluster or large clusters, so you get um, even more aura effect. Um, aside from that, um, there is cases where I would suggest even getting using a five passive voices just so you can get to the aura effect threshold you need to get 90 auras and all this kind of stuff. I think that should be a topic for another video, like um, different breakpoints and thresholds. Maybe in the next one, we'll go over those. But if you don't really have, um, if you don't want to use voices, large eight passive clusters <clears throat> um, are very good. So there is some lightning ones you can use, and there is some attack damage one you can use. You can use shield clusters. Um, let's go over a couple of very good um, options. The goal of these clusters is basically just to uh, give you stats you want more than damage. Uh, most of these clusters are going to be increased damage, but there are some that gives you, say, like, lightning penetration which is actually very big for damage right but most of the time you're going to be looking for a notable that gives you something that you need on the build like this one storm drinker gives you energy shield leech it is nice to actually only get one notable so you're not looking for a three mod but a two mod and then a lot of good stats on your added small passive skills one good notable for lightning clusters is storm drinker storm drinker gives you a lot of lightning penetration and then it also gives you uh, lightning damage uh, leech so 0.5% is enough leech basically pretty much all the leech you're gonna need okay so there is another cluster I like to use um, and this is a shield cluster and it is a little bit expensive to get uh, but the nodes we're looking for are pretty interesting right so we get um, prodigious defense or prodi yeah I don't really want to say this uh, it gives you 3% attack and spell block which is going to be 6% uh, with glancing blows. And usually this is enough to kind of get you to a very comfortable block situation, right? And then another one you can roll that is very nice is martial prowess, right? So this gives you increased global accuracy. We do get a lot of flat accuracy from our precision, the replica dream feather sword and all that kind of stuff. So this basically fixes your, um, this with precision is, it makes it so that you, um, it's really easy to get your um, accuracy. 200% right so this is one jewel that I like to use but you can use pretty much any cluster you can go for the 
uh, mana leech one, right? If you want, if you just want to get mana leech, you can get the mana leech, a uh, mana leech one. And the main thing you're looking for on these is just some useful notable for your build, right? So for like block, if you want to get some more block, get some more block, attack speed, accuracy, like we mentioned on the uh, lightning one, you know, there was the storm drinker, which gives you ES leech. There's another one, um, scintillating idea. Um, the reason this one is very nice is because it gives you 20% increase in maximum mana. So this is going to give you a bigger mana pool, which means it's easier to fit in stuff like vitality, precision, and these kind of things, right? Very nice if you need the extra mana reservation. Okay, so let's talk about the small clusters. Small clusters, pretty much the only thing you're looking for here is the introspection node, right? So this gives you 10% increased aura effect. You can run about um, nine of these right now on my build, so that's like 90% increased aura effect, so pretty insane. And also, these are giving you all of the reservation you need to fit in all of your auras. So when you're starting out, you don't actually need to buy these extremely expensive I level 84 bases and you don't really need 35% increased effect along with introspection. When you're starting out, you can buy the cheap ones. They only have to be item level 68 to roll introspection, right? So make sure they're item level 68. And as for do you need two passive or three passive? Well, it really depends on your build. So every build is gonna have a different amount of reservation they need. So it's kind of hard to say, you know, like, oh, go, just go get this much, right? Because I think a lot of builds, some builds will be different, right? You might have more intelligence, intelligence, which gives you more mana. You might have less mana than someone, right? So those kind of things do affect your build. But in general, I find that having three, three passives and three, two passives is generally enough. And I think the best way to go about this is when you're building your armor stacker is you make your own POB. So import all of the gear you're going to buy, make a POB for it, check your reservation, right? Do your reservation last, right? Once you get all your items, your gear, your rings, then start looking how, okay, well, how much reservation am I going to need? And, you know, put in some two passive clusters first, see if that's enough, and then start working up to three passives, right? So if you don't have enough reservation in POB, then just start adding these three passive ones and see how many three passives you're going to need to actually get things going but okay so this uh, this will be it for the gear you know i think more specific gear and all that kind of stuff will be covered inside the pob like actual like guides for different build templates uh, we'll do in a different video so we'll go over like a Doriani's prototype version a grasping male version and a transcendence version I think that'll, uh, yeah, I think that'll be it. Uh, and then I guess we'll do another video about breakpoints and that kind of stuff. Um, and a lot of like common problems people have with the build. So that'll be another video, probably the next one. But that's it for this one, guys. Um, let me know if I missed anything. If you, you know, have some other cool uniques that you think uh, might work or, you know, that you've tested out and have had good success with, um, put them in the comments so we can go check those out, right? But thanks for watching, guys. Um, really appreciate all your views and comments. I'll try to get back to you whenever I can. But I'll see you next time.